Hello all. Once again, welcome to my channel, The Interventionist. Please use headphones for better audibility uh, because a few of the previous viewers have commented about uh, audio being a little bit off in some areas. So now I'm using a proper mic to record uh, whatever I'm talking to it. So hopefully the sound will be better, but it will be way better if you use headphones. And uh, please note that I'm not recording this from any studio or even uh, I'm not recording it from the department. I'm right now at my room. You can already hear the background noise of uh, crickets chirping and all other things. So hopefully the audio quality is sufficient enough for you to understand today's topic at hand. Then here I would express my sincere gratitude to all the viewers who had enabled for our channel to cross a thousand views for all the videos combined and we have already crossed 200 plus subscriptions which was the target for me when i started up the video channel so thank you once again do continue subscription do watch the videos do comment and do support thank you so much so today in this uh, part we will be discussing uh, about uh, the physics part of mr spectroscopy the acquisition part and the pros and cons and eventually we will be discussing about the various peaks of the graph so coming to this so i have intentionally put two graphs here this one here represents an acquisition of a histogram using a low te technique which is te of 30 milliseconds and this one actually represents another technique in which we use a higher te value with a different technique of multi voxel acquisition this is a single voxel graph this is a multi voxel graph so right now everybody will be having a doubt what is single voxel multi voxel what are the te and other parameters like how you interpret this graph and all those things the objective of today's evaluation is to teach you regarding the basic physics of acquisition and explain to you what you mean by low te acquisition what you mean by high te acquisition and similarly selection of sections what you mean by single voxel multi voxel and finally the reading and reporting of mrs so that part we'll cover as usual we'll cover in the second part of the videos which will come later so the principle of spectroscopy so spectroscopy in general it represents a very broad term it is generally it is not considered as a physics exclusive thing it's a more chemistry than physics yeah like spectroscopy if you read anywhere they will mention it as more like chemistry related things because it has a lot of things to do with chemistry rather than physics so we have come across uh, spectroscopy when we were in our grad schools where we use a prism and we pass a light through the prism we'll get a like a rainbow coming out on the other end that is the uv spectroscopy in its base base level there are different ways of uv spectroscopy so this is just the starting stepping stone to that so basically what a spectroscopy means that it represents an interaction of matter with electromagnetic radiation so here in our case as a clinician the interaction of matter the matter corresponds to the organ which we involve widely is brain which we use and the electromagnetic radiation at question here is the rf pulses which we use it is not the magnetic field it is the rf pulse rf pulse is the one which we use to study the interaction of rf pulse with the matter at hand which is brain okay so the next thing is uh, the uses of spectroscopy it is used everywhere to detect identify and quantify the information of various molecules in some types of spectroscopy you can even use to quantify atoms or identify atoms so basically spectroscopy has three parts continuous emission absorption so this is the basic types so continuous uh, spectroscopy one example is our uh, uv spectroscopy emission spectroscopy differs from continuous spectroscopy by that it will have some spaces between the different spectrums de depicted absorption spectroscopy is somewhat in general terms we say as the inversion inverted image of emission 
absorption spectroscopy will have wider gaps between the spectra. So, example of different kinds of spectroscopy are atomic, infrared, UV, and of course, Raman, as we guess correctly, Raman spectroscopy is named after our famous Nobel laureate physicist C.V. Raman. And uh, then the star of the show, NMR, the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So, coming to an MRS or in vivo MRS, the exact term you should use is nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. And the most widely used uh, spectroscopy, magnetic resonance spectroscopy nowadays is proton spectroscopy. It's an analytical technique where we use water suppression of the protons of a metabolic molecules and which are assessed in different processing frequencies and it can be separated from each other and plotted in a histogram. So the assessment is the histogram, about the histogram. So assessment is visual assessment of the peak size, location and ratio of the peaks and of course abnormal peaks. So this is the take home point of the day. As a standalone evaluation, MR spectroscopy has no or little value. And uh, due to recent research data, apart from brain, MRS has having lesser applications elsewhere. If you are, if you, most of you are being familiar with the uh, issue with pirates too, that is prostate imaging and reporting protocols, they have removed spectroscopy as an important tool to grade pirates. So you should understand why. So general points, these are like factoids. Yeah, of course, which is better? Seven Tesla is better. But more than the field strength, homogeneity is the most important factor which we have to think for. You will have a better image, better data, better histogram in a 1.5 Tesla with homogeneous field or than a 3 Tesla with an inhomogeneous field. Just remember that. But higher Tesla will improve the sound to noise ratios. So previously 0.3 is better, less, less, uh, 3 Tesla is better than 1.5 Tesla and 0.3 is the least, have, will have the least sound to noise ratio. So what essentially changes is, yeah of course when the external magnetic field becomes stronger, the larmor frequencies of the molecules will change and the, not the molecules, the protons will change. So what happens is that we will have more and more protons recruited in the external field. So once you apply an RF field, RF pulse, you will get more matter to interact with. So you will get when you plot a graph in a 0.3 Tesla or, or 1.5 Tesla and you will have more things to assess in a 3 Tesla machine. So this is just to give an idea, overall idea ab about the proportionate difference between a 0.3 Tesla and 7 Tesla where the molecules process in watt frequencies. So in a 1.5 Tesla which is the most widely used machine nowadays, in my place at least we have 1.5 Tesla. The processing molecules are spread between a ratio range of between 63 to 64 megahertz. So just how much it is in zeros. So just imagine this represented in the x-axis x-axis of the histogram you need a longer page i guess right so then comes the mrs and water conductor the thing is this is the one of the most important part of mr spectroscopy where general mr likes water protons for imaging mrs doesn't need water protons for imaging we used to suppress the water suppression sequences using water suppression sequences and we generally avoid the fat as well so the reason is why this one this is what you call a sideband artifact what happens is that whenever you use if you never you fail to suppress water molecules and you plot the data into an histogram you will get a graph depiction something like that somewhere between at the 5 ppm range you will have a very large peak of water which will be so towering and it will scale down the actual peaks which you want. This is actually an NAA peak which is now very insignificant. And uh, this also will cause intermittent other artifacts. The precision ratios will change. The values will not be that accurate. So 
water peak will scale the histogram so bad that all other will become insignificant. So remember that. And so the final take point is no to water, no to fat. So how we avoid fat? We select a voxel where there is no fat. That is the technique. There is no other uh, written technique there. We just avoid voxels with fat. We avoid selecting a voxel close to the skin, close to the cranial vault, and we take it towards the center of the parenchyma. Okay. Step one, selection or part or section. So remember, uh, in general, when you do an MR spectroscopy, you don't start with MR spectroscopy. You will be acquiring other se sequences and we'll select one such sequence as a baseline sequence. And on top of that, we will acquire the MR spectroscope images. So uh, usually in my center, we do is if it is a contrast study, we will take uh, the post contrast fat suppressed sequence as the base study. Or if it is a non contrast study, we will be using a T2 image, axial sections. Step two is water elimination. For that, we have two techniques. One is called chess, it is called chemical shift selective technique, and the other one is very commonly used IR or inversion recovery. In brain, it is flare. Step three is acquisition. So I've uh, gone through countless journals and I've actually found out there are different names for different machines. But these two names are the basic things and which referred as a standard set of all the uh, journals. So you can write this in your exams. So the first one is STEAM, Stimulated Echo Acquisition Mode. And the second one is PRESS, Point Resolved Spectroscopy. So STEAM <coughs> is an imaging technique where we use repeated 90 degree RF pulses instead of 180 degree RF pulses to refocus. Okay, so this is something like to a gradient echo imaging and it has a shorter TE. So shorter TE and a lower RF power requirement. Meanwhile, press has a relative higher time of acquisition. That is the TE is longer and uh, it has a similar acquisition type of a spin echo imaging that you apply 90 degree RF pulse. After that, you apply two 180 degree RF pulse to re refocus. So, uh, content wise press will be better but uh, acquisition wise team is better so in, uh, but remember this one fact of interesting fact is there that as the uh, field strength improves from 1.5 to 3 or 3 to 7 the sound to noise ratio of the steam improves keep on improving so this is the last thing on the acquisition of images which is actually an assignment for whoever are watching this please read about laser and semi laser these are the newer acquisition techniques where you can use special specially modified uh, directions of various pulses to acquire even better histograms and uh, seven tesla is even better a seven tesla has a special sequence called special in which you can use uh, a technique in which you can acquire steam images which is equally better or equally good or better than that of a press image or similar vice versa so as a radiologist uh, we will be generally put with single voxel imaging and multi voxel imaging the all the previous slides are just the basic of basis of the physical physics part of the acquisition. So generally we will be seeing a single voxel spectroscopy histogram and a multi voxel spectroscopy histogram. Uh, and uh, the basic differences are that single voxel spectroscopy, as I mentioned earlier, it is acquired using a lower TE technique. You can increase the TE values in, even in single voxel spectroscopy. It is not nothing that you can only acquire it in 30 millisecond or something, but generally single voxel spectroscopy is done in lower TE values so that you will get an overall assessment of almost all the molecules possible. The reason why I mentioned but not all is that there are so many metabolites uh, and other molecules in any part of our body and uh, spectroscopy will be for will be tailor made to see certain molecules only. That's because of, that's uh, the reason is because of the proton to proton proton to electron interactions you will get a, either a combined peak of smaller molecules 
acting up a, uh, to become a larger molecule. So this is much evident in the difference between a single voxel spectroscopy histogram with that of a multi-voxel image. So it's very evident in that part. So most peaks are combined in single voxel spectroscopy. So the point of resolve or differ differentiation is very bad. Meanwhile, in MRSI, which is a 2D or 3D representation of uh, spectroscopy, has a more detailed spectrum with histogram readings. But the only drawback is the number of molecules which can be represented in a higher TE value acquisition of multi voxel imaging is way lesser and it's very often in brain it is limited to choline creatinine and creatinine second peak and NAA. So that's the drawback of uh, higher uh, time to echo imaging. So this is basically just to show an example how a, a same location uh, a multi single voxel image in a selected in a lower TE and a higher TE image what are the basic differences in it? So as you can see in a lower T acquisition, you can see there are additional peaks which are very, uh, very well seen actually. But the problem is that if you consider the scaling factor, this is actually scaled in a lower uh, set data set. Uh, it doesn't just represent it together, but it's not actually the Y axis is not the same. X axis is same, but the Y axis is not the same. This is actually a scaled model. So see that peak of NA which is very tall and the other molecules are very less in this and you can see even a lipid lactate representation in a lower T and additional molecules are seen here. So this is how in a higher uh, T value you get a NA peak creatinine choline and creatinine which I was uh, earlier mentioned and this is a myoinestral peak which is not that evident here. So these are the differences which may mainly affect it and uh, last the last slide this is uh, somewhat like a uh, take home point uh, what do you mean by so we have reached the end of uh, today's uh, discussion so this is how a representation is made in a final data so i'll be explaining this in detail in the next video in the beginning and we'll go on to more practical applications of spectroscopy in the next video as well. Uh, I, in this uh, time, I'd like to thank everyone who has supported me with uh, subscriptions and uh, we had close thousand views as I mentioned earlier and I hope it to be better from the in the coming days so that we are get motivated and I'll keep on making the better videos for you. Do continue sharing and uh, do continue watching. Thank you so much.